Working on this beast and I'm using gilding waxes to add the finer detail. Excuse me, I'm a bit hoarse this morning. Um, it's been a long project, I've done lots to it, um, but I thought this was worth sharing here on you on YouTube. I haven't been here much recently and I promise I will be. I've just been a little bit busy with the renovation of this room and I finally got round to um, painting this piece of furniture and I'm really happy with it. As you can see, I've got some gilded sections on here. These are natural trims. That were, these are the original trims that are all on this piece of furniture. It was really detailed piece of furniture but now I'm adding a little bit of uh, gilding wax to try and add its um, some sort of age in its paintwork. Um, and the thing was, I wanted a really good um, aged gilt gold. And I've looked at many, many products and to find that really dull gold with a little bit of shimmer is really tough. And the nearest I've got is this gorgeous product which this is Poshchuk's Patina, and it's an oil-based. Now, these come in a few colours, um, brighter versions, but as you can see, look, that's the colour of it. It's kind of a dull, dull gold. That's inside. Really dull. And I really like it, and it's great. Absolutely great, but I wanted to knock it back that a little bit further. Um, I love it. Sorry, I'm reading. Anyone that's watching a replay, I'm really te terrible at reading comments and they go quick on here. I will answer your comments afterwards. Good morning. Um, so I will come back and answer you any questions afterwards because I'm terrible and they come and go so quick on YouTube. Um, so I'm not ignoring it, ignoring it, honestly, if you're here with me live this morning. So yeah, it's really hard to find um, a, a good gilt gold that has got real age. This is, um, the colour is Byzantine gold, am I right? Byzantine gold. Ooh, you can't really see that. Byzantine gold, which is great, but it was still a little bit too um, shiny for me, so I'm mixing. I'm going to show you my little mix, um, and then I'll show you a little section somewhere on the piece close up so you can see how it's turned out. Now, this piece of furniture was beautiful as it was. It had lots of age and patina, I've gone back, you will, well, probably when we get to the oval, you'll see some of the age that I've put in with the chalk paint. It deserved the sort of um, character with the paintwork. That's what I felt. So this is why I'm going to all of the extremes to make this look absolutely beautiful, as if it was always painted. So, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take a little bit of, I've got card, this is my palette. You can see where I've mixed, this was last night. You can see here, this is quite shiny, and this is the dull version. So you can see how I've knocked it back. These are both oil-based products. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of Byzantine with my palette knife. I'm gonna take this out, scoop it out. There you go, that's all I'm gonna need. And I'm gonna pop, I'm gonna tell you what I'll do is I'll pop a little bit on the card just here. If I can. I'll pop a little bit on the card here so you can kind of see what the true colour is. It's quite lemony, even still, quite shiny. So we're going to knock it back. So I have here Annie Sloan Dark Wax, again, another oil-based product. I'm going to take about equal parts. That's probably a little bit more than the other. So about equal parts, and I'm going to mix the two together. And because these are oil-based products, they will work really well together. So we're going to smudge them in with my little palette knife, and it should give me that perfect aged gold. It just is knocking back, it's knocking back the uh, gold. It's adding a little bit of a brownie warmth to it. It's taking a bit of the shimmer out of it. It's perfect for me, perfect for this piece. So they incorporate really well, these two. Of course, all of the um, posh chalk pigments, um, patinas, patinas, sorry, patinas. Pigments are the ones that are, I always get this wrong. Josie at posh chalk will tell me off so many times for this. Patina, 
Patina is the paste. Pigments are like the dust that you mix with the infuser, which is like a paint. It's like a gold paint. Um, they are, and they come in the same colours as well. So you can get this in a um, pigment as well as a patina. Um, and they're gorgeous. I have linked this in underneath in the comments section. So if any of you want to go and find the, these products, not the Annie ones, um, don't have an affiliate link there just yet, but if you want to jump through my affiliate link, I just put the, a US affiliate link and a UK one underneath, go through that, it'll give me a kickback on the products. Um, I'll only ever use products that I love and, and I'll be truthful about them and these I do love and as you all know I love any products as well. So anything that I put you there, but of course go and look at all the other products. There's some amazing trims like these, would you bends as well, So and I've been using plenty of them on other projects and I already have. So in this particular live, if you're watching it on replay, go through the um, description box and you can use, help me out. Um, all of you Americans know how that works. Um, a lot of the UK were a bit slow on the uptake with affiliate marketing. So, right, that's the gold as it was straight out there. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Now, there's a slight, rub it in a little bit. Can you see there's a slight dullness? It's not as shiny. It's knocked it back, that little bit. And also, I've pre-dark waxed the areas that I want. So, um, I'm not doing this big trim here. I'm gonna come closer and you won't see me anymore. So I'm gonna pop this to one side with all my little brushes. I've got different brushes for different um, waxes. I've got my clear wax, I've got my dark wax, and I've got my wax mix with Byzantine, posh chalk, Byzantine gold. Uh, uh, patina, patina. Right, so I'm going to bring you down. Sorry, guys, you can see my hand a little bit here. Do we have a good view there? We do, a little bit, a bit higher. Right, so what you can see, guys, here, I'm going to pull this open, I think, so it gets out of my way, is I've already dark waxed this. I did this actually last night, but you can go straight on with the wax. Always um, apply a sorry if I'm jumping to a clear coat of wax first. So this, when you're adding the clear, it's already, the whole piece has been waxed by the way in clear, but now I'm adding another little bit of clear wax. Now this helps for, if I make a mistake, I want to erase it, rub it out. Um, I can kind of remove any wax that I don't want in any area. So you can see that I've gone above. I want, the trick is I wanted to push the dark wax into all of the crevices as it would be as age. On this particular area, I am actually going to rub it on with my finger. So I'm going to take a bit of the, um, the mix on the end of my finger, smudge it around on the end of my finger, and I'm just going to pick up the high ground on that trim. Now, if you don't have a piece that's so elegant, like this one, and you want to um, add trim, go through the link again. If you want trims, sim similar things to this to add to your furniture, you all know where to go. That is Would You Bend Posh Chalk Interiors. The two links that are below, you can find all sorts of bendy wood trims that can go on your piece of the furniture, which you can do this. So you can take a rather plain old piece of furniture and turn it into what looks like a relic like this one. So, I'm just going to be very careful. I probably will hit the, I'm not that steady hand, look, I've hit a little bit there, but I will show you in a minute how I'm just going to, a few little bits that I've hit and I'm not happy with. There you go, another bit there. But I'll just show you how I just take that back out into that corner. That's gone on lovely. So that, Effectively, it will still be very, um, it has an open time on it, so it'll still be very, you'll be able to rub it off if you're, you've got it in the wrong place, but it'll take probably about 24 hours to really dry in, and then it'll take another, a whole month for it really to harden. Any of the waxes take quite a while for the spirit to kind of evaporate out and then for them to set. 
Right, I have another little brush here. This is gonna have straight dark wax on there um, because I've hit a few little bits above that line where I just need to erase like there and I can just take that bit out. I, I did quite well for being on camera actually. So there you go. And then I've got a cloth here and anything that I don't like above I can take out. So that's that piece done. I hope that makes sense. Oh, we've got seven of you there now. So that is that top part done. Let me push these together so we can kind of see it with the doors closed a little bit. There we go. And it looks gorgeous. And the two colours together, all of the browns mixed in with the gold, it just looks perfect for me. Also, I'm going to come down now. I'm going to shift you around a little bit. This is going to be hard work. Um... Sorry guys, if you're watching live, I'm really sorry. I'm a terrible camera operator, but I may take you out of here in a minute. Um, might have to move all of my stuff down. That can come down there. Oh, hello, nine of you now. Bring that down. So, I also, oh, one thing that I didn't mention, all of the areas that I painted, I'm gonna come in camera a little bit more, all of the areas that I've painted with, or what I'm adding the um, gold on, I have actually painted them. It is a very slight color difference from what I'm working on. Um, I did that for a reason because should this wear off, there's another colour underneath, which is, um, it is kind of like a, a dark linen-y colour that I mixed up. Um, I just wanted there to be a base coat. Let me see if I can take you out of here. Um, can I switch the camera around? Yes, I can. Give you a better idea. And give you an idea of the pattern that I've created. So can you see on the knuckles here, it's a little bit more beigey coloured. There's a little bit of fly speck in there. And also you may see um, a residue of, can you see all of this on the glass? So not only did I paint this with a contour, contour blend, different color, you know, the different color reference between there and there. I also took this out into the yard and spritzed it fully with um, actually that color. The colour that I've added to the trim, this sort of beigey colour. So I paired everything down and this is the residue. It needs to be cleaned. You can see it's like it was a, a fine mist over the whole thing, which you can probably see in the lighter areas. Can, if I come close, look at those. It's almost like drippy. And then there was also the darker dots that you see, these ones, was just flicked from a brush. That was added a bit more graphite. But it gives you an idea of what the pattern is like. And you can see there, the true, now this colour, you can see the colour a little bit better there. That's what we're going to make gold. So there is a lot, although you're seeing on the camera at distance, one flat colour, this is not one flat colour at all. It's got patina, age. Um, there's going to be a gold trim here and gold on these knuckles and gold in the ball, on the ball and claw. So you can really see that I've added lots of age to the piece. Right, let's go back round, back in here. I'm just going to do the top of this oval where you can see. So this is un, um, no dark wax on this area now. So I'm just going to do the top half, show you how I would tackle exactly how I'm going to apply this um, wax. So first of all, this was pre-waxed yesterday and it's starting to cure. I can feel it's feeling quite smooth and silky, but I'm going back in with my clear wax and I'm going to do, I'm going to go over the whole area again, mainly, I'm focusing mainly on the areas that I'm going to, I'm going to do the full door even though you can't see the full door, um, I'm going to focus on the areas that I'm going to be applying the um, dark wax and the gilding wax, um, but I am doing the full door because if I need to take something out that I don't like, I can just spread it away, if that makes sense. Um, 
So that's the clear on. You don't need more. You don't need much more, especially when you've waxed the previous day. Right now, I have um, just plain dark wax here, and I'm using a small brush. I've got two different brushes on the go. This brush and this brush. I'm going to probably use the bigger brush for the internal part here. Um, it's going straight into that crevice. This is going to add that dimension, another dimension to the oval. Um, it's where build-up would go, sort of dust and grime would sit in the oval. Um, excuse me for the bits that you can't see, I'm so sorry. Landscape is not good for this sort of shape furniture. But I'm doing it all in one go because if I don't, I might get in a pickle trying to blend one thing into the other. So up and over, and then I'm kind of like softening away in certain areas. I'll do the same at the bottom. That's it. Softening away. Like so. So it's adding that bit of dimension. But I'm equally, I'm going to go around the outside of this lip as well. So again, I'm going to pick up the smaller brush this time. And up and over and round. Right into that crevice. So this is anywhere where there's a ridge in the wax. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, I would take a full big wax brush and wax the whole piece, but not on this. I'm being very delicate about it, about where I choose to place this wax. I'm never frightened of um, dark wax. As long as you have that um, clear wax underneath, the only time I would use dark wax or black wax or a dark wax over a light colour um, I would never use it without the clear wax, but the only time I would use it would be over a dark colour and I wanted to make it darker, like black or graphite or Athenian black or, you know, sometimes one of the darker shades, maybe, but not very often on, on, on colours that I would do that. All right, I can tell that there's no wax there, so I'm just going to... That's it. Um, the other thing that I would say is when you're mixing from one wax to the other, don't do as I am. I'm just going straight from the cans, um, each can, and you can cross-contaminate sort of colours, so be careful. Right, so all I'm doing now is kind of just rubbing away, softening, so it's just sitting in the crevice rather than, and if you really feel like, oh, there's a bit too much there, you can use your clear wax, again, if it's decanted into a bowl with clear wax, and then you can kind of just soften where that sits. So that's first part. There we go, I'm just going to have a little, yeah, certain areas that I think a little bit too much, but that's fine. Less on the outside than more on the inside, I think. But nevertheless, it still needs to be there. It'll help. Spreading that out. Right, let's focus on up here now. So that's it, simple. You've got that real faint line in there. Now I'm going to go back with my gilding wax. I've got, I have got a small brush here. I'm going to try with a small brush first. This is going to be tedious. It's very, a very small area. So I can go on top, which I could probably do that with my finger on the top of that lip. Yeah, but ultimately what I do want to do is I want to go into this lip as well. I want to go right into that crevice because that full lip needs to have, it's like painting it on. I need to go right into both sides of this crevice. So, let me see if I can get you closer. You can't really see in this light either. It's not very good light. So, and I can go back again, like I said before, and tie you any, any residue that I've gone too far over like there, I've just made a mistake. And if you can see that little mistake there, I'll carry on down. 
And because I'm doing it on camera, I would normally get in a better position and take more time over this, but because we're doing it with you, um, come down here. Plenty on the top surface, because that's the surface that you're gonna see that's gonna shine. Right, let me show you. Can you see, there you go, there's a little anomaly there. Can you see where I've gone over? So I'm gonna go back with my, I could do it with a clear, I've got a small, a small brush with a clear. I could go like that and just blend that away. Just really gently blend it away and that takes the gold gilding wax off just to neaten. There's another bit up there actually. Chuck it in there and it neatens that edge. So let me just pull a bit further away. I don't know if you can see on camera now. Can we see a little bit? Can I go like that? Yeah, you can just see a little bit more. Where's my little brush? Go up there a little bit more and add that little bit of brightness. So it is time consuming, but very worthwhile doing. And can you see now very subtle dimension changes? That little bit of dark in there, the little bit of dark on the outside of that little tiny, it's only a tiny little rim that makes all of the difference. So um, I'm gonna proceed with all of these, all of the areas that I want to um, finish on this cabinet. I will post a picture probably here on Instagram as well, once this is finished, once this is all cleaned up, um, and the full thing's finished and styled and dressed. But I hope that um, demystifies some of how um, waxes work together, oil-based waxes, um, and makes it a little bit easy for you. And don't be shy of mixing waxes together. Most of them will work together. Somebody did ask me a question yesterday over on another platform about white waxing gilding wax together, I've not tried it. It could be quite interesting. I'm sure white and gold could make a paler shade of gold. I don't know, it might make a more lustrous sort of pearlized finish. I've not tried it. So if anyone wants to try that, it might be quite interesting. But these are my colors. You know, guys, these are my sort of shades. Um, and I think they work really, really well together. So dark wax, um, clear wax first, dark wax second, tidy up any areas that you don't like, and then go back in with your gilding wax, and then you can go back with either dark or clear just to tidy it back up if you've got any gilding on any areas that you don't want, because if you leave a little bit of gilding, which I have got a bit up there actually, you probably can't see it, with a bit of gilding wax there that I've caught, um, I can just take the clear wax, take that off, because if I don't take it off, what will happen is it will always shine in the light, and it'll always shine on that surface. So I only want to get it on the surface that um, I want to shimmer. Now, back in, um, I don't know, the Victorian age or Edwardians or further down the line, they used gilding a lot to highlight um, details like this, gilt pictures. Um, a lot of the pictures were very dark then, the pigments were very dark. And the reason that they used it, it, it was because of, they were going by candlelight. So the, when the candlelights flickered, you could see highlighted edges of picture frames and detailed pieces of furniture like this. They did paint furniture. Um, so there's a lot of people out there that don't like wood being painted. Um, and lots of wooden furniture would have had gilt on that as well. So um, there's a reason why they use gilding. Um, sometimes it would have come in gold leaf. It was just to add that twinkle in the dark environments in that period of time, so you could see the highlights of things. So, and it still has its place. It looks gorgeous, guys. It looks absolutely gorgeous. So, a little bit of useless information and why you would probably use gilding. I love it. Um, as well with all of my mixed patina, obviously the slight colour changes. It's just adding age to a piece that had age. It's got a really nasty crack in the glass there. You probably can't see that, but it has got a nasty crack in there. It's never bothered me. We've lived with it for 15 years this way, and now we're gonna live with it for another 15 years. Mr. M is already saying, if we get the place in Madeira, can we send this one to Madeira? He loves it. And I think with the blue skies of Madeira, 
on the white walls of a beautiful cottage. This would work there. I intend it to be with us for the rest of our lives at least. Um, but just with a new costume. It's got a new costume. Anyway, I'm going to, going to stop rambling on. I love to learn the history bits. Thanks. Thank you. I mean, history with furniture and stuff, I've only, it's something that I've only learned along my journey. Um, and I do like to learn things about, I mean, we, when we was in Sweden, we had the uh, chance to visit a beautiful castle. Um, they call them um, Gumbo, Gumbo Slots, I think it's called. So if you want to find that, Gumbo Slots. And it was a completely wooden building that was painted from top to toe, and even all of the furniture. So they had uh, the equivalent of Chippendale furniture, but it was all painted, which for me was fascinating, you know, um, especially when, you know, I'm not saying haters because I love wood. I've got a piece of wood over there staying as it is, and it's got woodworm in it, and I love it as it is. But sometimes you'll get people that don't like us to paint over furniture, and I understand that, and if it's done poorly, then, Absolutely, it's such a shame. Um, but painted furniture has been around beyond the 1600s, especially in uh, Sweden, it was so popular. Um, and if you look into the history of painted furniture, you, it would change your opinion on what you should and shouldn't paint. And um, these pieces of furniture are sought after, um, they're like Chippendales, but with paint on there. Um, so have a look at that you know if you like history of painted furniture and understand why sometimes for me it's not a big thing to have to worry about painting furniture i know it divides opinion and of course it does i, I understand that but um, to learn about that it's really interesting and things like the gilding and why they used it it's really important so i've, I've always just learned along the way um little bits of history it's so important that we learn about why things started out that way and of course it's like pine furniture, it's painted, it's stripped, it's paint, painted, it's stripped, it's painted, it's stripped. It goes around in circles, so, you know, um, good furniture will be renovated over and over again, and that's what it's about. It's, you know, for me, is, you know, quite possibly, somebody might have sent this to landfill at some point, surprise, because it had a crack in the glass and there's a, a big chunk of veneer off at the back. You know, somebody may have renovated that. I could have done that. I've learned about French polishing, I've, um, learn about how to apply a new veneer. Um, so I've done all of that and it may be something that I'll show later on, but at the minute it's painted furniture. So there's many different things about renovating furniture and why we should, um, because it's really important to keep it away from landfill and keep it um, renewed and kept and loved. Anyway, I'm not gonna ramble on any longer. Thank you for all of those that stayed with me. Um, I will catch you all next time. If it's a replay, hashtag replay me. And all of the gilding products, unfortunately there's no affiliate link for any Sloan products as yet. It, it may be something that I put on later um, into any of the videos. So um, there may be links for that later on, but at the minute there isn't. But most definitely Posh Chalk and Wood U Bends, if you see me using them, please go through my affiliate link. It gives me a kickback, it gives me a reason to keep on um, blogging and showcasing what I'm using when I'm using the products. So thank you very much. And I'll catch you all next time. Thank you for joining me. Lots of love. Take care.